Hi there guys, we are going to be looking in this lesson at output, specifically hardware devices concerned with output. So let's get started. Here is what we're going to cover. We are going to look at what is output. Then we're going to have a look at the advantages and the disadvantages of various output displays. Okay. And then also we're going to look at how we measure the quality of monitors and printers, the outputs of monitors and printers. So let's have a look at what is output? What do we define output is? Well, basically guys, output is the communicated result of processed data. Okay. And I hope that makes sense. So it's the processed data. It's stuff that we've told the computer to do and then it tells us what it has done. So here's another explanation. It's the results of processed data or information which are now accessible by us. So it's the results of processed data or information and now we have access to it and we can see it and work with it and do something. So let's have a look at a couple of types of output. We have auditory output, we have visual output, we've got tactile output and physical output. What do all these things mean? Well, auditory we know is what we can hear. So anything that you can hear, that is auditory output, okay? Visual output is what we can see. Tactile output means we can touch it and engage with it with touch. So kind of like when you uh, are able to work with something like gestures on, a, on, an, on an output device like a, a tablet screen, okay? That's tactile output because it actually can respond to that. In fact, there are some tablets where it is able to, you know how it buzzes? When you touch it, it buzzes and you feel the vibration, okay? That's tactile output, all right? And of course, physical output, something that we can actually feel, sort of like a game controllers, like racing games or fighting games, when you get hit or crash or bump into something, the whole console like vibrates and shakes in your hand. Yes, that's physical output. So when do we use output or when is output actually used? Well, when we need to see the results of the instructions that we've inputted into a computer system. That's obvious, all right? When we need to engage with an operating system. So when we need to engage with an operating system or an application and do stuff with an OS, we need output so we can see what we're doing, okay? Or when we need to receive instructions that we need to respond to. Okay, so if something, if you're flying uh, a drone somewhere and the drone is telling you that it's about to go off course, then it will send instructions to you to correct that course. Some of the advantages of output, specifically display devices. So let's have a look at the interactive whiteboard. The interactive whiteboard, what is cool about an interactive whiteboard? Well, it has interactive components, hence the name interactive, that you can draw on the board with a finger or a stylus or a special pen made for the board. As you can see, there she is, she's busy drawing stuff on the board there. And then you can actually move things around, select things, change the color of things, all in real time. You can capture what is on the screen and save it for later viewing. I'm sure you've seen your teachers do this where they might have drawn something and they're like, ha, huh, that's a good drawing. I'm going to save that because I have another class I need to show this to. And they can do that as well. You're not limited to just the size of that board. You can also scroll down and create slides or pages that you can just keep going and you can have an almost, almost unlimited content, unlimited content. Some of the disadvantages, however, of an interactive whiteboard, well, obviously it relies on electricity. It's a function, guys. So no power, no whiteboard, no functionality. It can easily be damaged, believe it or not. All right, you bump that thing, you knock it to something, you got guys in your classroom playing with a soccer ball, which they should not be doing, and it hits the board, okay? then yes, you might have to constantly calibrate it now because you've knocked some of the inside. It's actually quite an advanced piece of technology. So please be careful with these whiteboards. It also requires training and the licensing of software. A lot of whiteboards come with their own software and you need to be trained up on that. So therefore it can be quite expensive, all right? Let's have a look at some other display dev devices such as, um, monitors like that guy over there. So some of the advantages of display devices. So yeah, we are able to display a variety of media at a high definition. So screens, projectors, mobile phones, tablets, all of that stuff. The screen technology is getting better all the time. 
this is pretty cool as you can see in the video it can function as an input and an output device because they're all touch screen you can touch it and move things and give commands via the screen as well it allows us to interact with and operate with a computer system via the GUI the GUI the graphical user interface okay that's what all OSS need they need an o, uh, GUI so we can in interact with it okay so that is some of the advantages of having a display device however there are some disadvantages first of all if you're constantly staring at a screen the whole time it can cause physical strain on your eyes and you end up with glasses like me uh, screens can be easily damaged trust me I've this happens all of the time if you drop the phone or the tablet or the laptop oh man don't drop your laptops guys I did oh horrible screens can so so easily be damaged and then of course that affects the quality and the functionality of the display the physical dimensions of the device can also affect how you engage with the operating system or the content for example if you're trying to work on a crazy essay for history or whatever and you're trying to do that on a phone the size of the phone screen is way too small I mean it's pointless trying to do an essay on a phone screen a tablet's a bit better a laptop is even better because the screen size is big enough for you to work on right the output quality output quality of display devices and we're going to look at monitors first computer screens monitors how do we measure the output quality of monitors well one of the things we look at are lumens and you're thinking like lumens what the heck is lumens guys lumens is how we measure the brightness of something okay lumens I think is from a French word for lumiere lumer something like that it means light light okay candle in, in French I think the word for candle is Lumer. I don't know what it is it's French okay so it, it's basically how many candles brightness man I'm waffling now sorry guys back to the point lumens is how bright something is okay so one lumen is like one candle so if something's 50 lumens it's 50 candles worth of light like that's how bright it can be so that's how we measure the brightness of screens we measure them in lumens we also look at the display resolution now the resolution is how many pixels we have on our screen okay so you might have a screen that's 800 by 600 which is pretty small 1280 by 720 1920 by 1080 that's like uh, high definition stuff okay and then even more even more today so the number of pixels we have also affects the display resolution of our monitor the refresh rate so what is a refresh rate of a monitor and you'll see this if you start shopping for monitors you're gonna start seeing stuff like refresh rates the refresh rate guys is basically the ability of a monitor to redraw the displayed content a certain number of times per second it's how quickly the pixels can respond and get redrawn um, on a screen so the higher the refresh rate okay the less lag you're gonna get when you're playing your video games the better quality your monitor is going to be response times well basically that's just how many frames can be displayed per second how many how quickly you can display your frames per second on it and this is good for gaming high definition super high definition videos movies etc and of course the contrast ratio you will see this as well the contrast ratio is basically just a calculation or a figure to show you the whitest white and the blackest of black how dark the screen can go and how light the screen can go and the difference between that that is the contrast ratio all right so I hope you guys let me just go back a slide go back slide okay just make sure you got all those down okay know at least three of these right for exams like know at least three of them and what they mean how about printers how do we measure the output quality of printers well the first one is DPI okay dots per inch how many dots per inch in the more dots you can get in an inch the higher quality your printer is going to be the paper type are you going to print uh, on uh, you know what's the word I'm looking for like this this glossy paper for photo printing or just matte paper which tends to soak up ink and fade the colors but it depends on the paper type so the output quality depends on the paper type there you go are you using toner okay for laser printers or are you using ink for inkjet printers that affects the quality as well you'll find that documents that are just typed 
essays, for example, are much better quality printed on a laser jet. Whereas other documents which contain a lot of images and photos and photographs and stuff like that, that is much better quality when printed on an inkjet. All right. Unless it's a color laser, that's pretty darn good. Color lasers are awesome. And of course, then the number of colors that you're printing. Okay, are you going to be printing full colors, all the colors of the rainbow, or just grayscale? Okay, guys, thank you. That was your lesson on hardware output and how we measure the quality of various display devices.